afternoon, friends. It is a beautiful May Saturday afternoon here in Spokane, Washington. I'm Heather Van Deventer, the Dean of St. John's Cathedral, uh, and I am way, way, way up above the ground here in our Caroliner cabin. Um, so what that means is that we're up above the tower um, and about, oh, probably 10 feet below us would be my guess is where the top of the ceiling in the tower is. So we're above that. There's more up above us and you're gonna get to see that during this time. Uh, I'm here in my, my casual Saturday clothes, but I also wanted to be here in uh, one of our St. John's t-shirts that shows the tower. I figured that that was right. And it certainly made the climb on up to get up here a little bit easier to be in casual rather than ooh, clergy collar. Uh, standing here with um, some uh, an older photo of the cathedral and also with one of the benefactors with, with, uh, without whose efforts this uh, tower and this carillon wouldn't have happened. Um, uh, Mr. Jewett, Dr. Jewett, um, was one of the main contributors to this effort. I am also here, though, in person with the very live and real Burl Cinnamon, uh, who has been the Cathedral Caroloner since 2008. Um, so, Burl, thank you so much for inviting me on up here. This is a real delight. Uh, I'll tell you, this is like an awesome work day that I got to come up here on this day um, to be in this beautiful space. I've been waiting for a time to be able to come on up and be be here. Um, I'm glad it's not January. Yes. So Burl, but Burl climbs up here um, every, every Sunday, Sunday. Um, Most. almost every Sunday, uh, as well as sometimes during the week in order to practice. So Burl, tell us a little bit about where we are, um, where you are, and um, about well, this carillon. I'm, I'm sitting at the clavier, it's called, technically, of the, uh, of the carillon. Um, a little bit about carillons in general. Um, they were first developed in the 1600s in the low countries of Europe, Holland, Belgium, and northern France. And at first they were used as timekeepers because the ordinary citizen did not have a watch or a clock, and so they uh, helped people uh, keep the time. This particular instrument was installed in 1968. Um, by, the, by the December, it was uh, mostly installed, wasn't completely installed. And on Christmas Eve of that year, the then uh, organist choir master of the cathedral, Harold Einicke, uh climbed up and uh, played Silent Night on the, um, on the carillon. And then uh, the installation was completed and uh, after that, and in August of 1969, uh, it was um, uh, we we probably had dedicated. some dedicated. Dedicated. Yes. I was going to yeah. say we probably was, had some sort of service at that time to consecrate a, it. There was a service, um, yes. and there was a fabulous concert that was held. Um, and uh, we've got um, the record of what the music was at that time because. Uh, in 2019, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of this carillon, and a couple of pieces were played um, that were in that first right. that first concert. So that was that was really neat. One of them was the one I had requested, a rendition of Bright College Years. Uh, this is not my first time standing here at the clavier. Am I? Was that the term? At the clavier for a carillon. Um, the, the, my university, Yale University, has a carillon, and I was one of the many who, in undergraduate years, climbed on up the stairs, far more spacious than our stairs here, in order to get up there and have a chance to play a little bit. Yes, the, uh, the donor for this carillon, uh, a Mr. Greer from uh, Maryland, um, who, whose wife is part of the Jewett family, uh, he, he donated uh, the money for this carillon, and uh, he was a graduate of Yale. So, uh, anyway. Bula Bula. Uh, I'm sorry? Bula Bula. <laughs> okay. That's our, that's our, our chair, Bula Bula. This, uh, the carillon was manufactured or, or cast by the T John Taylor Bell Foundry of Loughborough, England. It uh, consists of 49 bells, uh, the biggest, which is nicknamed Big John, after the, the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. 
and it weighs about 5,000 pounds. Uh, the smallest weighs about 17 pounds. The total structure is about 40 tons. It is though safe, and you should still come to the cathedral because it has been up there for 50 years and is still going strong. Right. Um, I think we can move to the outside and should, show you. Should the, we take a look yes. outside? Uh, just look at these wires. Each one of these wires is connected to a bell, and, and you'll see more of that when we get outside. So we'll move outside for a minute. Let me just read to you real quickly. Uh, there's one bell that has an inscription, and the inscription on Big John, as it's known, is, is this. John disciple of the Lord, apostle and evangelist, in thanksgiving for the life and work of George Frederick Jewett. Okay, we're outside of the playing cabin right now, and you know, take a look up at the bells. These are three of the larger bells, and you can see the bells and the clappers, and the bells don't move, the clappers do. And as I say, each one of those uh, uh, clappers is connected by a wire and a rod to a, uh -oh. uh, a baton in the playing cabinet, which is what, what we play on. And that so holds... the batons are the things that are like keys. Right, right. Like a piano key, but instead key. they're right. called a baton. Right. And um, the, the whole, the, the, the system by which the wires are connected to the clappers and the bars and everything is called a transmission system. So we're just going to move around and let you see the whole thing. I also love the um, the structure of the uh, the I beams that we have here, and on different sides, uh, they're labeled different things. So just like your erector set from back in the day, there's an A set, a B set, a C set, and a D set. One for each uh, each side of the structure. In some place, there's a. Spokane, Washington on, on it somewhere, I think. Oh, it's on, it, I, I thought that was cool. It's on each one of these these big beams, okay. like up here. They've got that um, imprinted on there. And uh, moving this way. Um, oh, so what's this, girl? This is the motor the to the Big John. Uh, on the organ console is a button that you can press that will cause this motor to start and this wire attaches to it and it will toll what we call tolling Big John and uh, we're going to demonstrate that for you um, in just a minute here. The, there's, so Big John has two clappers, the one on the inside which I would play with my feet and then the one on the outside is run by this motor which is uh, started uh, at the organ console. There's also another bell, uh, it's, it's up an octave and a half from Big John, which uh, you can ring from the organ console, it's called the Matins, M-A-T-I-N-S, Matins bell. And uh, we'll demonstrate both of those for you. Uh, and I'm guessing here, this is like the volume control. Well, This system not, right here that'll turn the, the louvers to open and close them? Not, um, doesn't really have much to do with volume. Uh, these louvers uh, are open right now because of the season. Uh, okay. Come late fall, I will close these with this contraption in there, uh, and, and it helps to keep out snow. We do, uh, uh, there does some get a light dusting of snow in, yeah. the, uh, in, the, uh, in the area here, and can be on the bells too. I just, bet. Just a, a, a light dusting. It uh, can blow in through the tracery. Right that's uh, part of the, the windows, yes, or would-be windows, but the, here it's uh, just the tracery. All openings are covered with chicken wire or whatever. Uh, birds aren't a particularly good thing for carolongs. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go around the side? Yeah. And if you look up, this is Big John, and maybe you can see uh, the inscription on this side of, this side of the bell. Okay, uh, look for that. Oh, yes. You have to see it from several different angles to be to able to To be able to all. get all of the words, <laughs> absolutely. I love the tradition of naming the bells. Uh-huh. I really, yeah. I really do. It's, it's right up there with naming of ships, um, the other things. 
The clapper is a different shape uh, from the exterior one and yeah. the interior one. That I couldn't tell you why. It's just that that's the way it's run, and so it requires a different, different, uh, completely different shape. That's the only one. Well, I don't know what the the mountains bell. I don't know what that what looks that like because like. I I haven't been up there. So, are these three of the biggest bells? I don't really know. It may it may go from here straight across, or it may go. One, two, three, yeah, four, five, right. six. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, if somebody were out here when I laid them, they could tell me. <laughs> Maybe we'll get Brendan to do that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's hard when you're playing. Right. You don't and, see what. <laughs> right. And so again, Big John is the one, and that one's how many pounds again? Five thousand. Five thousand. Two and a half tons. Okay. Two and a half tons. And it's a concert pitch C, and it plays the C below middle C. Okay. So yep. all of you budding piano students out there, you know where that one is. So we gonna move keep on going there. around? Carefully. You can peek in through the window to see it from the uh, see the transmission from the other side. From this point here, you can see that each bill has a counter counterweight, um, so that it it goes back to where it starts from. Okay. So you can repeat the notes. If you can show them. Yeah. Right. You can definitely see where the clapper hits. Uh huh. Yeah. That's interesting. It's been hitting there for 50 years. Right. Right. Still looking good. Still sounding good. Yeah. They may need to be may need to be rotated or something. I. That's done every once in a while. Right. I'm standing here in the center. You can really, and you look up through the wires and the structure, you can really see those small bells. Yeah. They're, uh, you just have to be in the right position. Right. Oh, it's such the, beautiful engineering. Yeah. Yes. I, it's, and I think they were doing this in 1600, late 1600s. Right. Right. Of course, they're, those are a lot different than what this is. Yeah. Just lots of lots of beauty in the structure here. Anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're now back inside the cabin. Um, we've closed the door, um, and definitely once the door is closed, it's it's a lot quieter quieter in here. I I notice that we really are hearing, um, you know, that kind of that. That, that dull roar of the traffic outside. Yeah. So I, I'm sitting here at the Clavier's, we call it again. Um, uh, I just wanted to demonstrate a little bit how we play the carillon. Basically, we've got two hands and two feet, um, and we play with a semi-closed fist. And then use our feet when necessary, and it's the, the, the pedal board is, is an aid in playing what our hands can't get. It's not like an organ. It doesn't have its own staff. It's, it's much more like playing piano music. Um, but it helps, it helps fill out the chords. And sometimes we can play more than if we have to play like that. We can do that. But generally, we're playing with a semi-closed fist. And um, um, the first piece I'm going to play is um, uh, a piece by transcribed uh, a transcription of Bach's Bist du Bainier. And I might say just a word about carillon music. Basically, there's two kinds of carillon music in very general terms. Music that was specifically composed for the carillon, which I'm not playing any of that this morning. I, there are other times I'll be playing that I will play some of that. Everything else is transcribed from other composers. J.S. Bach never composed a carillon piece, nor did Handel, nor did Brahms, nor, uh, you know, uh, nor did Schumann. And um, so any, if any time you hear a piece by one of those uh, composers on the carillon, that means somebody has transcribed it. 
So everything that I'm uh, playing today uh, will have been transcribed from either either a folk tune or, or a hymn tune or from another piece of music by a, by a composer. So this is J.S. Bach's Bist du Banier, which is very well known. late 1600s, early 1700s, a um, preludio, part of a sonata, the Largo section.
this piece, I uh, gave an example, played an example of one thing that you can do with a carillon, and one reason why it's called a carillon versus an electronic uh, instrument. I uh, am able to be expressive with it. I can play loud or I can play softly. Whereas um, a lot of people think that carillons are all electrically operated. Um, if it's a true carillon, you have to be able to play it manually so that you can be, uh, uh, be expressive with it, have, have softs and have louds and, and in between. So if it's an electronic instrument, um, it only makes one volume of sound. Um, and for instance, uh, Big John, um, that's always the same. When it's done electrically from the organ console, it's always one volume level. It, it, uh, but, but I can play it loud, or I can play it softly. And that's one mark of a true carillon. Carillon has to have two full octaves, 23 bells, and has to be able to be played manually from the, from the keyboard. And Next. That's, that's the minimum, 23 bells is the minimum. That is the minimum, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, if it's less than 23 bells, and there are those that play bells, but it's like, it looks like a small piano keyboard, that's usually called a, ch that's called a chime, a chime. If, if it doesn't have, and if it has a regular piano looking keyboard, it's not a carillon. It's not a carillon. Even though it may have 24 or 25 bells. Has to have the batons for right. it to be a carillon. Right, right. you have I, to be able to control the volume. Uh, I was uh, watching you play uh, on those first two pieces and some of those, I was amazed because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not a pianist. I, I know about six Suzuki Book One pieces from when my kiddos were taking piano. Uh, but nonetheless, those things that would be, you know, right next to each other, those notes that would be right next to each other, um, and easy just to run your fingers down, uh, for instance, in the Bach, easy to run your fingers down in the Bach, very difficult here because of the spacing. Right. Um, so you're kind of having yes. to let your hands, you know, slide a little bit. Right. Um, and, and you, you kind of have to feel, and sometimes you go up here to get a note and you hope for the best. Right. <laughs> And uh, so, so what's up next for us, Pearl? Next is a piece by Gluck from his opera Orpheus. Uh, it, it's called an air or a ballet from uh, the opera Orf Orpheus. Gluck was lived from 1714 to 1787, so the mid uh, 1700s. I think you may recognize this one too.
from the composer Frescobaldi, Girolamo Frescobaldi. I have a one of three dances. This is the Corinta Prima. Uh, Frescobaldi is from 1583 to 1643, uh, much earlier than what we just heard. Corinta Prima. transcribed these pieces from their original works no. into Carillon? No. Okay. All of these that I have played uh, were published by, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a great deal of, well, not compared to piano music, for instance, but there's a great deal of published transcriptions of, mm -hmm. of uh, Carillon music. Uh, I have not transcribed any. Um, I depend on the, those who are far better than I to uh, <laughs> Now, I know for Sundays, um, when you play before worship, um, usually you run through, um, run through, um, usually you play um, carillon versions of the hymns that we're going to sing on those days. So for that as well, are you looking into resources that are out there, or do you come up, do you do your own work for those? Both. Both? I've, I, I have. Yeah scoured the catalogs and have found as much uh, hymn-based material as I can find. So when and we throw you a curveball and do a new hymn... I kind of play it out of the hymnal and do what I can with it. Yeah. Um, I prefer to play somebody who's written something on it, but I mean, it, I, can, I can play a hymn yeah. uh, out, of the, out of the hymnal with, with some work sometimes. It, it, Depends on you too. And it's interesting you bring up this subject because I'm just getting ready to play uh, something um, that I'm going going to play tomorrow morning on the on the hymn to joy tune. Oh, lovely! By, by Beethoven. Um, we're singing a, a text that's not the most common text associated with it is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. We're singing another uh, text to this hymn tune. But this is a relatively easy and straightforward um, uh, arrangement of the hymn to, hymn to joy, uh, arranged by Beverly Buchanan. Uh, who, thank thank who, you, Beverly Buchanan. Well, believe me, yes, thank you. She, uh, she bless her, rest in peace now, she is, is dead now, but she um, was at an Episcopal church in uh, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, for a number of years, and composed five volumes of M2 arrangements. Because she had wow. to do exactly what I have to do yes. every Sunday morning, play, yeah. them, play those hymns for the morning. So um, that's been a big help to me. <laughs> yeah, that's so, great. Joyful, uh, hymn to joy. 
by Beethoven. several pieces called hornpipe and, and, and this on. is this is one of them let's let this pass so um here at st john's we're um maybe a half a mile maximum uphill from uh sacred heart hospital and they um because they're one of the trauma centers around here they have a helipad um so uh sometimes we can hear um and as, as that sound rises, we can hear it up here in the tower a little bit more than in other places. We now have two pieces uh, by Handel. Again, Handel never composed a piece for the carillon, so these are transcriptions by a man named, uh, named Mr. Robert Lodine. And uh, these two pieces are from the Water Music Suite. The first one is an air, and the second one is, a, is called hornpipe. There are a number of hornpipes in these suites, but this this is one this will be one of them. This is the air, first of all.
this is this piece has been played quite a few times after a wedding, after the organ processional. I will play um, after the after the organ, and this is one of the pieces that I would play. So it's been played a lot. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, I appreciate uh, you you hearing this. I don't know if you. This is this has been really neat. This has been really neat. Um, one of the things that I noticed that's so different uh, is it's it's loud in the cabin because unlike again a piano that has felt around the dampers and the like, here we've got all of this metal, um, and so you hear a lot of the mechanism, a lot of the transmission as well as the music from outside. So it's just such, it's such a unique way to have that music. Well, and we, we have to, there's three windows in here and I crack two of them um, because it's a, it's a very muffled sound if you don't get a little bit of the true sound. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, and one of the secrets for how we get the sound down into the cathedral on a Sunday morning is you bring a microphone with you. Right. And does that, is that microphone put here in the cabin right. or is that outside? It's, it's outside. It's outside. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's hearing the bells directly. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it always sounds gorgeous. All right. Yeah, I have one you. favor. Yes. Can I play? You certainly may. <laughs> I know you're going to need to point to me for what I should, what I, what I should play. Well, this is middle C right here. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, uh, Burl made it look very easy, but so if this this is C here. C. So is this C here? One more. One more. This the spatial quality of it is is different. Uh, yes. A and again, I only made it through half of Suzuki Book One. Yes. Okay. Can I play Big John? Yes, you certainly may. Let's let's see if I can play a gentle Big John. To, pl to play it gently, yes. get it down partially there. You play softer by... By bring it part way down and then. Yeah. Okay. Rather than... Okay. Burl, thank you so much for having had us uh, up here. Um, it's it's such a treasure that we have uh, here at St. John's as Carillon, but especially, I mean, a Carillon is no good if it does not have a Carilloner, um, and you bring such heart and dedication to it. So, Burl, again, thank you so, so much. This has been just a real treat. Um, this also wouldn't be complete without saying thank you to Brendan Beal, who has been behind the scenes. Uh, I had the easy job of getting to, to come on up here. Uh, Burl and Brendan hauled up equipment so that we could do all of this. So I really hope you've enjoyed this visit to the St. John's Carillon. Um, and uh, listen I, for us. I just wanted to add that there's going to be a separate video um, on our social media that will show me coming up the elevator and the, the ladders to get up here. So you'll know what it took to get up here and then just imagine what it took to get some equipment up here. It was, um, it took a while. Uh -huh. So it's uh, probably one of the harder carillons to get to, uh, but um, it's, it's definitely worth it. And I, I know that the congregation enjoys it, so. And we know that folks in the neighborhood enjoy it. Uh, I know once upon a time we had someone who um, uh, called and left a message on the voicemail saying, um, can you um, turn on the carillon more frequently? <laughs> um, as if we had one of those that's chimes right. instead of a proper carillon. Right. Or the, that um, plays automatically. Yes, yeah. and, and this one does not play automatically. It's better than that. It, it takes a real person behind it. So Burl, again, thank you so much. You are welcome.